Welcome to Family Basics 101. I'm Dr. Bruce McClure, and we will continue our series on marital infidelity. On yesterday, we simply did a working definition of infidelity, and we defined it as a lack of faithfulness to the covenant of oneness. We also talked about the definition meaning voluntary sexual relations between a married individual and someone who is not the individual's spouse. Another definition we gave was an offense that injures public morals and an abuse of the marital covenant relationship. And finally, we gave the definition where in some states, infidelity is prohibited as a crime while other states consider it, consider it a crime if it continues over time. So from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, infidelity takes on different meanings. But one thing is certain. It's a lack of faithfulness, whether it's over a protracted amount of time or whether it's a limited amount of time it is still unfaithfulness. Now, legally, whether or not it is considered infidelity or not is a different matter. We also concluded yesterday's broadcast by talking from the text of Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old, thou shall not commit infidelity. That is an Old Testament command that Jesus mentioned in the New Testament. But the message is, infidelity has a starting point. And the best way not to start infidelity is to stay away from the idea itself, thou shall not commit the act. But in order not to commit the act, it becomes imperative for one to understand how that leads into the act. So today we'll talk about the development of infidelity. Most affairs begin with one simple word, friendship. Friendship. Affairs typically begin with someone that is known as a trusted friend, a good friend, a dependable friend. Most unfaithful infidelities act begins with a simple friendship or a co-worker. Someone that you spend time with over and over and over and over again. Someone that you find emotionally attractive or physically attractive and sometimes both. So these are the building blocks from which the infidelitous act takes place. And yet, we concluded our study yesterday by saying, you have heard that it was said by them of old times, thou shalt not commit this act of being unfaithful. Regardless of the friendship, regardless of the dependability of the individual, regardless of the close work relationship, and regardless of the time spent, regardless of how emotionally connected, and regardless of how physically attractive, there must be boundaries that are not crossed. And until those boundaries are clear in the mind of the individual, and until those boundaries are embedded in the heart of the individual, then you are breeding the groundwork for infidelity. Let's talk about the progressive buildup of the infidelitous act. The feeling, the real feeling, or it could be the feeling, the imagined feeling that emotional needs are unmet, and now they're being met by this friend. They're being met by this co-worker. They're being met by the person you spend time with. 
but you're developing a funny feeling, a good feeling, a sensation inside. The sense of boredom appears to be disappearing. All of a sudden, life has energy again, and you feel okay. And now you are excited, and you want to go, and you want to do this. The sense of being understood is occurring. Somebody's listening to me. Somebody really understands what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to express. The sense of physical affirmation is being reinforced. You know, you have this insecurity about how you look, what you're wearing, the color of your hair, the color of your eyes, the length of your hair, the type hairdo you decide to get, and all of a sudden that friend, that co-worker, that someone you spend time with begins to give you the physical affirmation that you need. The sense of being needed is being communicated based on who you really are. You're sensing that the person appreciates you, not for your external beauty, but because of your competence. And maybe in your home relationship, that is not being affirmed. You sense that an individual really loves being around you, not because of just what you have to offer, but simply because they feel comfortable being with you. It's based, you're communicating something completely different. The feelings, real or imagined, that emotional needs that are in the relationship being unmet, are now being met by that person external to the relationship, can lead to unfaithfulness. The sense of boredom disappearing. All of a sudden you love to be busy and you love to be excited. And there's always something energizing you because now you're in the presence of another person outside the marriage that can lead to an unfaithful relationship. The sense of being understood. I can talk to him. I can talk to her. They really understand what I'm trying to say. And it just feels so good to be in the presence of an individual who understands me and, and, and who can connect with what I'm really trying to say that can lead to an unfaithful relationship. A sense of physical affirmation. You really look nice. The hairdo, that's a beautiful hairdo. Oh, I love those shoes. I love that. And that can lead to unfaithfulness. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse number 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed infidelity with her in his heart. The end is the bed, but the unfaithfulness, the infidelity actually starts in the heart. When a man or a woman locks their heart in on another person, that's where the act of the bedroom begins. And everything that's necessary to get from what you locked your heart into, into the bed, becomes the process. But the text is saying, when you have locked in on it, you're probably going to make it happen. I'll see you back in class again tomorrow. Don't be late and don't skip class.